I'm live. Good evening, everybody. Nice, cool Monday evening. And Colombo opens out tomorrow. You can finally go out, but watch out. Be careful. Don't let your guard down. Uh, welcome to yet another edition of the Lockdown Diaries with myself on Pulse.lk. Uh, with my guest today, uh, Gamya Vijayadasa. Gamya is a Miss Sri Lanka 2009. She is uh, an entrepreneur. She's a foodie. She's a traveler. Uh, she's a lot of things. Uh, actress, model, all that. And we talk to her about all the facets of her life. Former Miss Sri Lanka. Gamya, good evening. Hi, good evening. Hi. You know, we have never met each other in person. The first time I'm meeting you here, meeting you is, is here. And I feel that I know you for years. Yes, well, <laughs> I've seen you uh, while you work, while you're doing uh, your comparing gigs. And um, of course, I've worked, I mean, I've watched your work for a long time. So, yeah. so happy to see you. And you live, live actually not very far away from where I live as well. What a small world. So, yes, Gambia is... a very small world because you know exactly where I live now. I know the road. <laughs> yes. Right. So, yes. Gambia is uh, a Miss Sri Lanka. She's an entrepreneur. She's a foodie. She's a traveler. She's a lot of things. A deeply religious person, I must also add. We'll start uh, talking about the, um, the, uh, the entrepreneur side of, uh, of Gambia. Uh, Vaiduria is your, is your label. Now, what is Vaiduria and what does it mean? Uh, so name. why do the name is actually my middle name because uh, I I'm an only child so my parents just thought let's just give her all the names we can and so I have three uh, middle names uh, so it's Gamya Prasadini Vaidurya. So that's where um, Vaidurya comes in. And uh, because I don't use the other two names that often, I thought, okay, let me use that uh, for my business. Right. And, what does it mean? Uh, it's got a meaning, right? This name. Yes. So Vaidurya. Means, uh, I feel like it has a Sanskrit uh, background as well, but in, in Singhala it means uh, it refers to the gem ti uh, tiger eye or tiger's eye. It's the brown Okay, one tiger the, eye. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So, what do you do? By the way, a label which is very you ship to uh, about fifty-two countries, or you supply to around fifty yes. plus countries around the world. Uh, yes. Before all of that, how badly are you hit by lockdown and no transportation, no shipping, all this stuff? Yes. So, because our production is predominantly in Mumbai, um, we are hit badly because India is hit quite badly, and uh, so the production is uh, completely at a standstill right now and even when we do uh, get a little bit of production done in Sri Lanka it's impossible to ship things out right now and the sad part is um, that we do still have sales coming in because the rest of the world is somewhat um, functioning as per normal so the US the UK their lockdown is not a legal lockdown it's just you know strongly advised to stay indoors so um, they keep ordering, but we just can't fulfill the orders. So that's a bit of a, that's, a, that's actually a really sad situation because when you have the sales and you just can't uh, exactly. fulfill the sales, then um, that's, really, uh, that's really tough as an entrepreneur to figure out what to do because, you know, my hands are completely tied because of the logistics of it. Um, but There's a question. In the coming months or weeks. What strategies have you taken to face current changes in your business, for example? Yeah, so the Achini biggest Pereira, one, yeah. uh, the biggest Achini's one, question. oh yes, Achini, okay, great question. The biggest one is, because my production was, you know, almost completely based in Mumbai, um, I decided a few weeks before the COVID-19 uh, blew up into what it was, I decided to start production in a small way in, in Sri Lanka because I was based here um, predominantly now. Uh, for my, you know, other life. And um, so that actually, now I feel it's, it's a blessing because, you know, yeah. if one area or if one geographical <laughs> limitation is there, then there's always another option. So um, sure. that's something I'm now trying to build into a full blown kind of um, production facility or just a production um, line that would benefit me in, in the long term and, and sort of give options to, to the business. Apart from saris, what do you have in your range of, um, in your portfolio? Yeah, so we have uh, the quintessential um, 
you know, what you see in the movies, your lehengas, which is the skirt and the blouse combo. Um, we do uh, bridal saris and bridal lehengas. We serve a lot of the Indian diaspora all around the world. So, um, you know, different kind of, you know, religious backgrounds, ethnic ethnicities. So even, you know, we do um, cater to nikahs and, uh, you know, that sort of thing as well. And um, yeah, then we've got jewelry, we've got, you know, sort of accessory lines as well. So it's a, it's, it's a place where you can get all of your, um, all of your ethnic designer wear needs met. And uh, the main thing is that I'm very hands-on. I design everything myself. We don't buy and resell anything at all in, in the apparel area. So I, uh, we produce everything. It's a very small team of people and they're very passionate about what they do. And, you know, I, I love the fact that they're Indian, I'm Sri Lankan, and this is, you know, we've come to like an amalgamation of uh, all these cultures and backgrounds and um, just sort of, you know, kind of building international relations in my small way. Sure. I'm, I'm just curious, apart from your first Bollywood movie, uh, how did you clinch the Indian market? I'm very curious. Um, in, in the it's movie normally movie? the other way around. Yeah. Uh, so showbiz for me obviously was in my blood from from very very young days. I was a born performer. I don't know whether I was any good at it at all, but I was just you know hell bent on performing all the time. I would make my family just sit and watch plays that I would put up on the spot. They're not scripted. I would just you know create a character and just you know build it up as I go. And they would go on for hours and my audience would fall asleep sometimes. <laughs> and then they'll, they'll wake up and I'll still be performing. <laughs> so, um, there are children like that. <laughs> yes. So um, the only thing is that they did, they did nurture my enthusiasm, you know. So whether it was a talent or not, we only came to find out later. But that enthusiasm, that sort of um, excitement in you, uh, I think it's really important that parents and families could sort of... Um, aid that and, and nurture that. So that's what they did. And the post Miss World is when I actually got the guts to, you know, make a move in that direction. Because even when I was in um, at Miss World, a lot of people said, you know, you look really Indian and all of that. But much prior to that, in my dream world, I you actually I speak like, English like an Indian. I, I meant to tell this to you. Uh, the several conversations we have had. Yes. You have an act. Yeah. You have you have an Indian uh, flavor to your, your your speech. Yes. Well, I did live there for six years, so it's it's hard yes. to say. And I interact daily um, with Indians, so that's also. Ah, there. so you listen. Okay, you talk. Fine. Okay. There's a question yeah. here. What's your advice to an upcoming entrepreneur? A be question brave. from one of your fans. Yeah. Be brave and. Now is the time. I always believe now is the time when people want to take a brave step in their profession and, and change career paths or embrace a passion. They always have this fear. I need to have this amount of capital. I need to have these amounts of resources. I need to have X, Y, Z sorted out before I do anything. Uh, I need to have people backing me to do something. Um, I started with nothing. I started with... Uh, 25,000 Sri Lankan rupees that I borrowed from my mom at a time when I was struggling in the industry that I wanted to be in so badly. I wasn't getting any work in India. I wasn't earning anything. I was living off of uh, pocket money that my mom was providing me. And I just thought, this is not me. This is not the kind of life I was destined to live. You know, I've always been an achiever. What can I do to gain control of my life again? So I started small and literally with 25,000 Sri Lankan rupees, I started with 15 saris, which my friend helped me put together by walking around with me to the markets, carrying bags of fabric. And we begged tailors to help us, uh, you know, sort of tailor them and uh, found one guy who was a young guy, um, called Raju who I'm really really grateful because he's the first one to say you know Makarunga I'll do it <laughs> so um, and he changed he changed my life because you know he he did such a good job of it and when I put it out on Facebook just on Facebook when I put it on Facebook uh, it sold out within about a week and rest is history and I'm just so grateful to each and every person who's ever bought anything from me because it really 
helped me solidify the idea that you know um taking a risk taking a leap of faith really pays off and that's that's what i would say to anybody who's who's thinking about it just go for it are you the best brand ambassador for all your creations i think me being who i am did help a lot and you know even when i try to because i'm lazy i don't want to sort of you know uh, do shoots anymore and stuff like that um when i try to get somebody else to do it uh, my mom has always said you know no puta i think you should i think you should be the face of you know face of your brand always there's value to it that you don't realize sure and um so i kind of just went along with what she advised for a long time and now i feel like yes um more than me i think the brand is recognizable and then you know people just say are you the person who's the face of this brand so that that is that is uh, you are the brand that, yes exactly and that's a really rewarding rewarding feeling sure it is i'm switching course now to come to the singular silver screen your first film was 1970 love story uh by uh, um arunaj jayabardana yes with uh, Ashan Das who was on the show I think last week and Hema Ranasinghe whom I'm waiting to have on the show. Yeah. Uh yeah, I'm waiting for his okay. Uh what was that Arun is a nice guy, he's extremely creative guy. I think Aruna's Nikini Das if you saw it was a brilliant movie. It was it yes. was it was it was just wow. Guys you got to watch Nikini Das by a guy called Aruna Jayawardena. It is it is a bit morbid but therein lies the strength and the depth of the movie. Uh yes. what was that experience like 1970 love story in 2000 and life changing in more than one way i think because you know obviously um aruna i feel did something that restored my faith in a lot of things because um i came back from bollywood slightly disillusioned about you know the industry and having to we'll go to that in the next in the next question yeah mm-hmm. yes so having to go through a few experiences that disheartened me a lot and i was offered i was offered a a, a gig a permanent gig uh, a six month stint on television hosting one of the biggest reality television shows sri lanka has ever seen opposite uh, or co- co-hosting with uh, kamal adrarachi that was a huge huge deal and um, i met arun adya he was one of the producers but we never spoke so um after oh. i was done with that I went back to Melbourne and I got a call from uh somebody who said Aruna would like to um speak with you and he emailed me and said I have this script I'd like you to do it. So, you know that really brought back my faith in a way that I'm ever so grateful for because you know I never I never had an in-depth conversation with him. Um I never interacted with him but he quietly observed me and he quietly observed what I was capable of and my demeanor and my professionalism. So that was a huge eye opener for me because wow okay there I was getting rejected left right and center um not based on what I bring to the table as an artist you know so um for me Aruna kind of restored that faith okay you being who you are you just doing your job and doing it right has value so that was important so i was doing the film before i knew it and of course um what what a launch i mean what a film to be a part of for your first film Hemal Ashan Mahendra Bimal Jaykodi stellar cast and uh, an out and out commercial film that's just you know visually beautiful and is you know sort of really a uh, script script driven and all of that so and so was, unlike Aruna also so oh unlike God, Aruna departure <laughs> from Nikini Vasu yeah like so exactly exactly experience of Nikini Vasu and and I love that about him because even when he's trying to do out and out commercial cinema it's done with a lot of uh restraint and a lot of depth and thought which I think makes him stand out in a crowd so um that was that was such a wonderful experience and I think I've never had more fun on a set than I did on that set I mean honestly it was it was such an amazing time what was it like working against opposite with uh, Ashan and Hema the stars of Vijay Bakule on the other side yes um yeah just honestly such a wonderful experience because we got along so well and there were moments where um we 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 had a bit of a like um hatara kattu where we had mahendra pereira uh 
Hema Lashan and myself. And um, let's just say I learned a lot of bad words. Ashan, <laughs> Ashan Das, you're watching the show. I know you're out there somewhere. What have you gone and done? Spoiling these young that, girls. It was a lot. Of, it was a lot to do with Mahendra as well, and uh, <laughs> you know, he a lot of everything is you know just naughty things that my mom would not approve of. But there I was. I'm oh, sure. Of <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, amazing experience because we travelled a bit, uh, went to Riverston for uh, part of the shooting, and uh, a lot of uh, things that went wrong during the shoot. Like not having the right costumes, and then us, the stars, having to go shop for the costumes at fabric gallery. Like you know, it's just it was such a uh, such a uh, wonderful experience where we got to bond. You know, and I think that's wonderful. I think we are bonded for life in that way. We are really good friends. So I've heard. Yes, so I've heard. Our uh, next one was your turn, Chana Desha Priya. Yeah. Show me that. How many years later was that? Uh, a year later, Chana okay. Desha Priya was incidentally the DOP on Aruna's film. So again, uh, restoring my faith one by one because that was another thing where somebody observed me, uh, observed how I work, observed who I am, and um, gave me work without me ever having to have a conversation or say, you know, I really want uh, to work or anything like that. So Chana just spoke to me and said, um, "There's a film that we're doing." um it's very last minute but would you like to be on board and really there was no question i had to because it's a wonderful script again it was a remake or a reproduction of a south indian movie and uh, the the audience really felt i think that it 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 really lived up to expectations so um again just you know one by one by one um trying to trying to rebuild uh, my faith in the industry and rebuild um the confidence you know because like we'll talk about later um just just your your confidence can take a beating when you put in sure, um sure. hot water like that and um it takes it takes time and it takes individuals like avinash jayawardena and channa deshapriya and a few others to really you know to show you that um that there are good as well as the bad so uh any more in the pipeline Yes, uh, there's a couple. I mean, as soon as I finished those films, I started getting a few more offers as well. There are a few that um, I am really excited about because the directors who uh, have approached me, their work I've seen before and have thought, okay, I'd love to work with this person. So there's a couple like that, and right now, actively, um, there's one uh, sort of a South Indian flavored film that we're working on. Um, by Just up the street, no. Yeah? Just up yeah. your street. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, by a young young director who's really enthusiastic and who really wants to do something different. And uh, I love that. I love passion in filmmakers and uh, people who are trying to actually leave a legacy, uh, make a difference, as opposed to just hey, let's just make a film. So um, those are in the pipelines. Now we go we go backwards to Bollywood. Two thousand and twelve was all up. uh it's yes. the sequence that was used in the trailer of this show as well uh yes. before i talk about stories what was that experience like getting into that scene wouldn't have been easy yeah someone out there loves your character in uter yeah one of somebody one of the fans okay thank you so much thank you rehana jifri yes thank you rehana yes um with alap i uh, was fish out i was a fish out of water basically because i had just uh, moved to mumbai and i landed this movie quite uh, quite suddenly because i had met the producers before for a lead role and uh, they'd obviously gone with somebody else because it required somebody of an older age group and i was only 23 or 4 at the time and um, but the producer remembered me and when they had an item song come up he immediately was like i have to get that girl on board let's find her again and they called me and um i was flown there a day or two later um and this was before i actually started getting any um formal acting training i joined my acting class a couple of days after i finished shooting this film so up to in that india. point in india yes so i did a okay. four four and a half month course in acting full time 
and um, before that you know i had only experienced hi nadia nadia ji one of your successors hi. down the line nadia of yes. um, nadia 2017 i feel like yeah amrita was 16 i think nadia was 17 or 18 nadia and she having her first baby uh, she's having her first baby wow. uh, i think in two weeks from now nadia good luck keep going wow. girl keep going yes, absolutely um yeah so basically it was um 2018 yes nadia <laughs> <laughs> i was there right <laughs> i was also um, there <laughs> yes you and that's where i saw you that's where i saw you um, classic story uh ajit is up nadia so uh nadia she they did all the rounds and came and uh, the last one was the evening 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 gown evening dress yes. parade and yes. they were changing and and before she went i as the mc and as the trainer i said nadia i have a, i have a very strong feeling i think you're going to win and uh, she was in a shawl back to hilton backstage we took this photograph for selfie nadia and i her last and then minutes later she was crowned miss sri lanka we got another one so it was the the nikam nadia and the miss sri lanka nadia i'll send that to you those two <laughs> photographs put together it's a hilarious story <laughs> Nikan Nadia, Nikan Nadia, and Miss Miss Sheila Nadia. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Just minutes apart, hey. Eh? So sorry, I interrupted you. Nadia, all your fault. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I up until that point, I'd only been um, performing on stage. So um, because I was a classical dancer, I would I would do a lot of uh, stage performances. So I just pretended like it was a stage performance, but. Um, it was nothing like it you are doing the same take a gazillion times it was uh, really really cold and even though i'm wearing very little clothes um, you know they had to every every single step we took you know they'll have to bring a massive blanket and cover me in it the, the very second that i was done so it was you know i didn't know anything about um, about cameras or angles or being directed um, any kind of technical you know aspects of acting like for example when the dop told an assistant to bring me an apple box because i wasn't tall enough for a particular shot it was a, i can't remember it was a high shot or a low shot i was wondering why they're planning to why they're um, trying to give me an apple box but turns out it's just a, like a stool to kind of stand on <laughs> but um, yeah i was i was that uh, you know naive and that new to the whole thing but um, post that of course um after the acting course uh, was completed you know i had a little bit more technical knowledge and and uh, knowledge in acting and that's what really gave me the confidence after that so you in bollywood you living in india uh, learning uh, acting in india uh, speaking hindi as well uh, you didn't make it to a lead role in a bollywood movie now there's a story yeah. and i think you're one of the very few actresses who walked out of a lead role out of a few lead roles from what i've heard because yeah. sexuality is used as currency i like that line of yours would you please yes. elaborate for everyone watching you yeah. sexuality so, um, as currency yeah um after alap i did two films in which i was uh, a lead role full full blown uh, feature films in hindi that were um, lead roles and uh, but they weren't a lead films you know they weren't uh, they were bollywood films but they were never uh those movies that you know that would release on an, a national level and really you know change lives that's the truth of it um because when you do get get those opportunities like i did a few times i came so close signed contracts uh you know we were about to go on floor so we were actually you know recording songs for the film with the likes of Shreya Goshal and 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 people like that and then you're suddenly told that to really sort of you know solidify this deal um that you need to do things that you don't necessarily want to do compromise in aspects of your life you don't want to compromise on so i think that current you mean in a sexual manner that's what you're saying yeah absolutely i think this is you know this is uh, common knowledge in in showbiz uh in bollywood in hollywood everywhere um but i think very very few people talk about it because um they, they kind of feel like it's going to somehow um be a disadvantage to them in the long run and um but i think that's changing in a big way with the me too movement with you know actors 
females coming up and really um, voicing their opinions and using their platform to make a difference. So I don't feel right in being quiet and being um, and hiding my story because people are risking a lot more than I am, you know, to to say this happened to me in Hollywood, especially when you see the kind of women that have come out, they they are at the pinnacle of their journey and they could easily lose everything. So, so um, this could have happened to you. This would have, might have happened to you, but it did not because you chose to or chose to walk out. Yes. Okay. And that's not easy. I, and, and that's why I don't really have judgment for people who choose otherwise, because when when everything you want is on the other side of one mere decision, then it, it takes a special kind of person to walk away from that. You know, whether that's a good or a bad thing is completely um, up to you to decide. But uh, for me, it wasn't a choice because um, a funny thing that happened when I was offered one opportunity that could have actually completely rocket launched me into the A-League easily. Um, when that happened... Um, I actually decided to, I actually decided to make a decision to go through with it, to say yes. Um, and yeah, and I decided, okay, I'm going to say yes. And I thought I'm going to give myself 24 hours to live with the decision of yes and see how it feels. So I went through in my mind the absolute emotion of what a yes would mean because sometimes we don't really think through our decisions in a real way. You so mean thought, sleeping with somebody to be very, very, very crude. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I thought, what would that, what would that, you know, feel like to go through that emotionally and physically? And I gave it an entire 24 hours where I was living through that. And at the end of the day, you know, it was, it was a very informed, very educated decision to say, I can't because I actually gave it a shot to think about it in depth to go through it emotionally and to realize, okay, this is not something I can live with. Kamya, uh, okay, so you emotionally said yes and you went through it emotionally. What was yes. that emotional experience like? There was no physical, but that... Yeah. What yeah. went on in your head? Well, it's terrifying because, you know, you think... Uh, you never think what a yes would mean and what a no would mean in in reality, in a real sense. So this would mean, like, do you ever think about, you know, what you would actually have to do, what you would have to go through, how you'd be treated, where, which positions you would be put in, you know, what would be expected of you, what would be demanded of you. You don't think about those things in detail. So when I thought about that, and then what would the aftermath be? Like, what, what if this is completely, um, you know, because... Um, <sighs> Kangana Ranaut, one of the one of the very very successful actors in uh, Bollywood, just said, you know, if if uh, sleeping with directors would get you to the top, then sex workers would be the biggest stars in the world. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. So it actually so it actually goes to show um, that it doesn't guarantee anything. You know, if you're if you're naive and uh, gullible enough to sort of even believe in these offers and these uh, uh, people saying we'll do this and these promises, then they can easily turn around and sort of um, say, hey, something's changed. Uh, we are not going to go through with it. We're not making the same film anymore. I've experienced that so much happening to people that I know. So I was you know, thinking to myself, Listen, what's the aftermath of it? What's the worst case scenario? What if you do go through with something and it doesn't turn out with the way that you, you know, expect it to turn out? Can you live with that? And at every step of the way, it was something that I just couldn't. And me being, you know, the devout Buddhist I am, um, maybe I had some sort of a fool's hope or a fool's faith also that this is what I was born to do. And if you, if you, are, if you have enough conviction to stand your ground, stay the course, someone up there is looking and someone up there, you know, it's, it's uh, I, I uh, apologize for this, but then, you know, we say, Dhammo Rakkati Dhammachari. So the Dhamma protects those who protect the Dhamma within them. So, you know, I firmly believe in that. So I keep hearing that every time I'm, I'm faced with a situation like this, you stay, you stay the course and, you know, there's, there's a force out there 
that's going to protect you and get you you know to the place where you need to be where you're destined to be but so your main source of income your main occupation your main job is vaiduria which is your labor yes yes but your heart is still heart is still in cinema yes well See, purse yeah, is I mean, one thing heart is something else yes exactly because i mean we we just can't earn a living off of off of doing what we like doing i mean that's just so sad <laughs> that is so sad that no i mean very few actors in the sri lankan industry currently are able to make a good ends meet mm. yeah to make mm. a good living just doing um what they love doing so they always have a side hustle you know <laughs> they need something to um put put uh, as their bread and food on the table food on the table there it is yeah okay. right let's go back to 2009 that would be 11 years ago on the 22nd of july which is my yeah. <laughs> which is my daughter's birthday uh, you were crowned yeah. derana miss sri lanka 2009 I I I watched the crowning last night on on YouTube and then again I watched you uh, at Rafaela's calendar launch I think last year so a huge transformation in that very naive uh, very naive very impressionable uh yeah. that kind of innocent gamya who is very yeah. controlled very you know you know you can't have no nonsense with me gamya of of last year what yeah. was that journey like miss sri lanka to now yeah i think uh it's 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 maturity and it's growth because i again was completely thrown into this world um from a very different background the 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 world of pageants as well as not having lived in sri lanka since i was 10 years old so just the sri lanka the cultural shock itself was you know huge and i had to get used to that um and then you're thrown into the pageant world where you know whether we like it or not let's just face it it's very cutthroat it's brutal oh yeah oh yes <laughs> yeah. yes yes especially yes. if you're not uh, from the industry if, especially if you're not a known face in the modeling industry um you know you're alienated you you um are questioned for your right to be here <laughs> so there's so in the run up on. to your winning the crown were you alienated were you questioned about your right to be here uh, and import from australia uh who is this she just jumped in here now she's she's she thinks yes. it's and you know uh and yeah you basically said ah. everything that they said to me how did you cope yeah. with that um, i don't that? think i would have it's depressing it's upsetting yeah oh, i mean is. of course uh, heartbreaking but my mom she took uh, she actually quit her job as a software engineer to come and be by my side which was the biggest sacrifice i think i've ever seen um who's got stuck i've got stuck or she's got stuck i don't know now i got a call um i just yeah um so she she basically gave everything up to be here supporting me because i think she felt like i needed it and i did uh, because i was getting affected by everything i'm sorry ah uh, that's the train right yeah okay yeah so um i think that, that having her here really helped me having her by my side she is uh she is a very strong woman nothing gets her down she has an answer she has a solution for everything um so because of that i think i got through it and then i just started imbibing those qualities within myself after that and uh, you know every time even now when i get down or depressed or disheartened she says don't forget whose daughter you are and that means everything to me because i know how she's how she's got here she's uh, you know raised me single handedly she's built a career she's you know built a home for herself and for myself and you know really um gotten me to where i am today so that that i think is what my journey has been just growing more into uh, a strong woman like her basically did you expect to win the crown that day yes yes but you then you pretended to be surprised i was yeah. watching your face oh no oh that 
<laughs> you look so shocked. <laughs> it was a surprise uh, because you know in Sri Lanka anything is possible. In the last second, anything can happen. Somebody can pull something, you know. But I was convinced I was going to win two, three years before I ever took part in Miss Sri Lanka because I knew it was, you know, supposed to be my destiny. So when I came down, I had a certain um, confidence that was uh, that was. you know built up from years and years of just practicing for it wishing for it using my subconscious to to live it and visualize it i just knew it so um you know even when i was traveling down from australia i said this is the first last time that i'm going to travel as just a mere you know just a mere girl <laughs> um i'm going to be a title holder from here on and i i understand that there was a a tad bit of you know um arrogance about that at the time um but that kind of unwavering faith uh, i wish i have now honestly i'm i'm a lot lot more doubtful now because yeah. of what i've seen of the world and that's something i want to get back into my life and just be completely confident um uh, about you know where i'm going you were a queen for one year your reign was one year and i always say you are a queen for a year but you are more an ex queen for many more years until you drop dead you are a former miss sri lanka so even now 11 years, i always tell the girls uh nadia you look you will agree with me uh what responsibility do you have to the crown the title of former miss sri lanka it is still a title you wear yeah yeah absolutely so how responsible are you to that um i think a lot of people don't i mean they see it as some sort of a, a frill or a decoration more than a responsibility you know okay this is just an addition to my name so and so for my sri lanka um but i do believe that there's a huge responsibility that really never ends like you said until you drop dead because and even something as basic as like you know you having to maintain a certain look and a certain physique even like we when you hear miss sri lanka when somebody is introduced even at 50 years old or 60 years old you always expect a certain grace a certain beauty and then people you hear people say you know yeah yeah we can tell that she was a title holder back then because look at her even now she has something about her a presence about her so um i think the responsibility is living up to that so that this this title carries value you know for years to come um uh, if we go and do something stupid or behave in ways that embarrasses the title then the title loses value uh and then of course you know what you stand for and and how you behave and all of that um because what we are trying to do collectively is raise the game because every single girl who's gone to a international pageant will tell you that we are not considered very highly in the international platform sri lanka doesn't get looked at twice so uh, why is that do you know why i mean can you guess why yeah i think um there have there haven't been enough game changers and i think that's why you know the likes of a caroline jury winning the mrs world title or a rosy back back in the day which is you know now not fresh in people's minds unfortunately um it was a huge victory but it's been years it's been decades so you know we need to keep producing that kind of talent and we have we've been continuously uh, delivering but it's not backed up by it's not supported by it's not sponsored well enough for these girls to have a fighting chance in the real world you know in the in the actual pageant arena after a while so they're on their own mm. exactly. after a while they're on their own and that's not stuff yeah it's there all the support ends when you get off that stage that's the truth that when you've been yeah. a part of pageant you know how extensive the support is there's only so much we can do um and the pageant uh, organizers it's not their fault either because we need a lot more sponsors to come in and say we are going to back this girl until she brings home a crown it's as simple as that you see yeah. india there's millions of dollars going into producing that crown and god's on us through this i believe that we've produced and we will continue to produce talent the kind of quality girls that is parallel i mean we we can find we can, we can absolutely Yes the brains the the grace which is just you know inbuilt sri lankan grace that we have um you know it's 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 world class without training so when you give them a fighting chance then you know it, it, the 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 whole thing opens up and anything becomes possible 
You as a Miss Sri Lanka, how best do you want to be re remembered as a former Miss Sri Lanka? I always say I just want to be remembered as a woman of substance. That's it. You know, somebody who had something um, to contribute to this world. So, Gamya Vijayadasa was this girl from Athurugiriya. <coughs> you heard, right? Who went <laughs> yes, to <representing. laughs> Who went to Musius College. Then she went to Marsiling College in Singapore. She was there. I still need to know how you know that, Kumar, because that is not and public knowledge. Then she went to, I, we have common friends, my dear girl. So then she went to Australia, to the Strathmore Secondary College, Australia. She did her BSc in psychology at the University of Melbourne, a BSc in psychology. And then her master's was a different course altogether, applied mm -hmm. commerce. And she went into management. Yeah. All this is helping with Baiduria, I believe. Yes. And now I'm doing Forget acting. It's Baiduria. Yeah, exactly. And that also is just kind of um, helping by Dora a lot. But um, psychology is a life, lifetime thing. It really does benefit you in many ways throughout your life. And even marketing as an actor, you know, there's a component of marketing yourself in a way, building a brand in a way, which most actors across the world either know themselves and know very well how to do, or they hire experts to do that for them. Um, the the stars that we uh, look at and, and the stars that shine bright and we look at with, you know, little sparkly things in our eyes and, and uh, aspire to be like aren't built in a day and aren't built on uh, by accident. They're built on purpose. They're built with a lot of strategy, a lot of brainstorming, a lot of people sitting in rooms and figuring out how to get them to be in that position. So um, that takes that takes strategizing, that takes marketing. So uh, I hope that will benefit me in that aspect as well, hopefully. So you are strategizing and marketing Gamya Vijayadasa or Vaidurya? Vaidurya, but I do, I do pay very close attention to um, how me personally as a brand comes across what content I want uh, you know, people to associate me with and what kind of imagery I want people to associate me with. It's very deliberate and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just about being truth, truthful to who you are, being authentic to who you are. But you need to have a form of management going on in there because, you know, you can't just uh, sort of, um, like you said, when you're, when you're a Miss Sri Lanka as well, you can't just be out and about looking however you like. You, you know, you need to be presentable all the time. You need to be speaking in a way that, you know, uh, kind of will remind people of who you are. So um, all of that takes a little bit of management. I think we all do it in a in management, one yes. way or the other. Personal management, okay? Yeah, yeah. Personal, personal management. management. Yeah. But I you are generally. Stars do it. Yeah. See, we haven't haven't we haven't met in person with, on on this. But Kumari Silva reacting to Gambia is your. I I find you a rather a reclusive figure. You're not seen all over, everywhere, and anywhere. You 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 are maybe a choosy, but. You are a bit of a reclusive person. Does that help? Yes, yes. Um, I, I do. I do uh, take effort not to be overexposed, you know, whether it's on television or whether it's on, uh, you know, different kind of uh, platforms. Because I think when you're always speaking or when you're always uh, appearing, when you have something important to say, people don't necessarily listen because you're always speaking, <laughs> you know. Um, so I must close this talk show down because <laughs> I'm talking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Not if it's your job. <laughs> so that's okay, fine. Now, you learned Oriental dancing from Kema de Costa in Melbourne. Yes. How did that happen? Melbourne? In Kema in Melbourne? Yeah. She lives here in Epitamola, Yes, that's where she is. Yes. Um, so she was. Uh, there to accompany her son who was studying in Melbourne and okay. uh, I think her, her son needed a little bit of uh, motivation and uh, babysitting and uh, uh, she was, uh, I, I hope he doesn't mind me saying that, um, but I mean, you know, uh, very close to his mom and all of that. So she traveled with him and they stayed there in Melbourne and I found out about this and I was dying to have, you know, formal Candian training. I was training with a teacher back then, but I knew, I knew that was not what I wanted. I was, I was looking for something else. I wanted the training to better. I didn't want to dance to like cassette music and CDs. I wanted the better. I wanted the, 
the authentic uh, Kandyan dance because I'd had a flavor of it here. My uncle's a dancer. He he got me started, and um, so I went and I met her um, in the city. And uh, she said, "I don't teach. I'm a dancer. I'm not a teacher." <laughs> I, I, yeah, and she's very typical very, Kami. Uh, yeah, no, no bullshit. She said, uh, "You know, I really like your enthusiasm, but uh, this won't happen." and uh, i just kept uh, i i was so persuasive i said please just give me one chance just give me one chance i really maybe once a week maybe twice like just you know every fortnight but just give me a chance and she said okay you come and uh, if you can keep up with me you will continue otherwise you know don't worry about it and i went and she was dancing in front of me and i i, I was dancing behind her i kept dancing i kept dancing i obviously knew the basics so i was dancing and then dancing and then i fell to the ground um i fainted and i fell to the ground because fainted? i gave up with her oh yeah. oh shit okay, sorry uh, because i oh. kept going and going and i could feel my uh, legs burning up and my muscles were uh, giving up on me on my on my legs and i just fell and my mom was right there and and i i got back up and i pretended i was okay and then she turned around and she realized and she gave me some orange juice i still remember the, the taste of that orange juice it was like amurthya to me and uh, and i think from there she felt she felt a little bit you know maybe sorry for me because sorry? you know this is a, yeah this is a girl that wants it so bad she'd rather drop dead <laughs> than give up so she said okay uh, come back next week we'll see in that tone and i said that's okay, how she I'll talks yeah week. that's how kimi talks yeah <laughs> so i came back every week and i i um, i i did my how old were you at that I time i was about 16 15 or 16 i think yeah and then she basically uh she held nothing back she said you know uh i'm giving you everything i know and that's that's uh, what she did and the the powerful thing about kema miss and the powerful thing about styles of uh, kandyan dancing is whenever i dance later like in life people people who know about dance would ask me are you a student of kema so her signature is that powerful i i just think it's Ooh. incredible um uh, because you know her style is very masculine so um mm. her dance is lower that it's it's not very feminine she's a power, she's a powerhouse of a dancer so people would just say you know you know is is your guru uh, kema so that i think is is the impact that she's had on my life so was she happy that the little girl became a miss sri lanka years later yes and interesting story she was actually so we have as you know we have the interview prior to the finale so um most of the judging is done in the in the interview and uh, so at mount lavinia hotel these big doors were closed and we were you know they opened the doors and they said okay uh, 4 by 4 or something you go in and then the next four will go in something like that they opened these big doors and i see her sitting there in the judging panel what and i yeah and i nearly died like nobody could have ever known that nobody could have ever known that and Oof. Uh, yeah and the funny thing is any other person would think oh she's my guru there's a chance you know that she might be nice to me but i knew that she would be the most critical out of all of them and she would just say you know what you're embarrassing me <laughs> you're embarrassing me <laughs> you don't deserve oh. to win what is that uh, tie around your you know, she'll be like that you know she'll be like why are you so jiggly in your body <laughs> so um, that was terrifying and she never said a word to me she never said a word to me she just observed and she uh, asked me a couple of questions and uh, after winning months and months later uh, you know i met her somewhere and she just very nonchalantly said oh i think you deserved it you know mukad 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 oh i think you deserved it or something like that you know like uh-huh. yes yeah, very 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 yes very yeah i know no shocks at that huh. so that was uh, that was a huge 360 moment to sort of have her be there i've come to my last question <clears throat> lots of stuff we covered <laughs> yeah come here <clears throat> you shared your story from atrugiri the entire journey to what you are today now 34 years of your life and um, you're single yes. uh how difficult it is to live and work in 
this world in Sri Lanka, in India, where you transact business as a single, young, attractive woman, which you are? Honestly, Kumar, I think the feeling is one of empowerment. I feel empowered because um, it's, uh, it's important to me to, because see, uh, we come from a middle class background where my parents, uh, you know, basically just made their way to where they are by educating themselves. My family is a very academic family and they only believe in the power of education. So uh, my granddad would have worked extremely hard to provide a better lifestyle for their children, his children. And then my mom did the same sacrifice, everything so she could provide me with a certain lifestyle. Being able to provide myself with that lifestyle, with that integrity and dignity all on my own is my way of, you know, um, sort of paying homage to to everybody who's, you know, led me here. So not having to lead, uh, lean on a gentleman to do that for me, a man to do that for me is 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 a strong statement that I'm making to myself. And this doesn't mean that it's a very sort of overly feminist thing. You know, I don't need a man. Of course, we, we need love. We need companionship. Um, but being able to be complete without another person and then having them add to your life and complement your life and add value to it is, is what's important. And I'm sure as a father, you would want the same for your child as well, for your daughter as well, where you want them to be complete on their own, not looking to, you know, kind of fill in blanks you know, reaching out to this person and that person. So once you become complete, and I don't mean perfect, I just mean imperfect, but, um, you know, complete um, on your own and trying to trying to get there on your own. And then somebody can just come and um, come and add to it. So I think it's, it's just a feeling of empowerment. And I think girls should really um, kind of embrace the value of doing it themselves. Yes, you're beautiful. Yes, you're young. Yes, you're charismatic and, and attractive. Um, let's not use that as our only bargaining tool and as our only uh, way to, you know, fulfill our life's dreams and goals. You are also intelligent. You're also resourceful. You're also capable. So let's rely on those assets more than our physical assets, I feel. Without trying to be preachy, but this is genuinely what I, this is genuinely what I tell myself because like, like I said, it's not easy. So you need to tell yourself, you need to have a, a monologue <laughs> that is going to uh, keep you going. So, Gamia, that was bloody well said. That was, as a father, <laughs> that was really bloody well said. Now, the last, last question, I have a quick answer. So what are you looking for in your future partner when you meet him? Yeah. Or what are your requirements, uh, sorry, to put it the other way. What, what would you want him to be? Uh, quick, See, because somebody, we are running short of time. <laughs> okay, yeah. So very quickly, just somebody who is going to um, add value to, to my life in a way that's going to help me grow, be a better person, and um, to better my life in, in uh, intangible ways, you know, in, in a very uh, deep, meaningful way. That's it. Everything else we can buy. <laughs> sure. Thanks, Gami. It was wonderful uh, as a father of a child, of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a young lady, a daughter, uh, talking to you and sharing your story and saying no, emotionally living that 24 hours uh, and then saying no, but that was like, that one, one experience. Thank you so much. Good luck to you uh, in your job, in your career, in everything you're doing. So strength to you. May you prosper and go right up in life. Thank you so much. Good luck to you. All Thank the best. There was time. You so in depth. I loved it. Thank you so much. Bye. Thanks so much.